the Russians are unable to stop the Ukrainian attack, which penetrated deep into the Kursk region. Russian sources report the capture of 11 villages and the advance of the Liberation Army up to 15 kilometers in the Kursk Special Operations Zone. The information comes with big question marks as usual. Kursk region. Our aircraft and UAVs worked all night. Enemy concentrations were being destroyed. The enemy is deploying logistics in controlled territories, bringing in fuel and ammunition. Judging by open sources, regular enemy troops are present at a depth of up to 15 kilometers. The width of the front is 10 to 11 kilometers. The armed forces of Ukraine were present as of evening in Lyubimovka, Obukovka, Pokrovsky, Zeleny Shliak, Tolstoy Luga, Nizhny Klin, Tolstoy Luga, Nikolaevo Darina, Darino, Sverdlikovo, Lebedevka. There are 11 settlements in total. The Russian army is striking at the enemy. Our infantry is working. Measures are being taken to ensure the normal evacuation of the population. And as usual, the lies of Russian propaganda are exposed right away. Two Russian tanks are destroyed by the Ukrainian armed forces before the Russians even had a chance to unload them from the trucks. Apparently, due to the fact that in the Kursk region everything is going, to put it mildly, not very well for Russians, Russian sources are increasingly starting to post disinformation. For example, fighter bomber COPE destroyed tanks of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region. Kills earned by KA-52, an additional reconnaissance of MI-8. Reality. Those are destroyed Russian T-62 tanks on Kamaz trucks in Suja. Chechens in civilian clothes come under fire on the highway between the villages of Sverdlikovo and Zeleny Shliak in the Kursk region. Sorry, no TikTok this time, guys, just real bullets. Very true statement by Russian war blogger Colonel Kassad. No matter how long the Kursk offensive will last, Ukraine already won in the sense of surprising and initially overwhelming the numerically superior and in many Ukrainian areas advancing aggressor state on its own soil. From the point of view of general assessments, let's wait until the end of the battle in the Kursk region, but it should be noted that the enemy was able to achieve operational and tactical surprise, just like during Balaklaya and seize the operational initiative due to a vulnerability in the formation of our troops in the Kursk region. Donetsk region, Pokrovsk direction. Video from a Russian serviceman. There's a pile of burnt Russian equipment around and one Ukrainian Bradley IFV in the center, which accepted the fight, symbolic. Здорово. And our friend Dmitry from War Translated is writing, Russian propagandists badly want to spread the theory about the intention of the Ukrainian armed forces to seize the Kursk nuclear power plant. It's understandable. After all, it is their favorite technique. The Russians are excellent at nuclear terrorism and blackmail, They've already captured the Chernobyl and Zaporizhia nuclear power plants earlier. However, the distance from the border to the Kursk nuclear power plant is almost 100 kilometers, 
and it is located close to the city of Kursk. You'd need a huge amount of forces to not only reach it, but also capture and then hold it. Why does the Ukrainian armed forces need the Kursk nuclear power plant? It will come in handy. There are many options. One, demand that the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant be given to them, and then they will leave Kursk. Two, they will demand the withdrawal of troops from Ukraine, otherwise they will blow up the Kursk nuclear power plant. It is impossible to blow it up with artillery and missiles, causing a gigantic disaster. Three, decommission the Kursk nuclear power plant without accidents, rendering it inoperative, thereby depriving Russia of this largest source of energy. But the main thing is that the enemy has already made noise, shown the sponsors of the war his effectiveness, and our inability to close the border, moreover, in a threatened area. Ukrainian forces working to evacuate some damaged armored vehicles in the Kursk region. The fact they are able to do so without being harassed by enemy drones and artillery is very telling. Putin was obviously briefed by the FSB about the reality, and he appears internally livid as Gerasimov lies to his face by claiming that Ukrainians have been stopped in the Kursk offensive with fantastical Ukrainian causality numbers to boot. Продвижение противника вглубь территории на Курском направлении остановлено. В настоящее время подразделение группировки Север совместно с пограничными органами ФСБ России продолжает уничтожать противника в районах непосредственно примыкающих к российско-украинской границе. Потери противника составили 315 человек, в том числе не менее 100 убитыми и 215 человек ранеными. Уничтожены 54 единицы бронированной техники, в том числе 7 танков. Операция будет завершена разгромом противника и выходом на государственную границу. Доклад закончен. And for the end, the 23rd Separate Rifle Battalion destroyed a Russian T-90M. It didn't break through. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.